Hello everyone, Mindy Beverly with you here today for Sassy and Crafty. Today I'm going to show you how to make a sweet card to show someone that you love and care for them. Um, today I'm featuring the brand new Love in an Envelope stamp set. Right here it comes with these adorable stamps. These are actually larger stamps on here. So you have this adorable little kitty with her letter and a little heart. We're going to be using this today on our project. It also comes with this super cute little kitty cat here with the little bunny friend writing little letters. And then some amazing sentiments, handwritten letters, our love in an envelope, which we're going to be using on our project today. And then letters create a connection that a phone can't replace. And sending a letter sends a piece of your heart. And again, these are available in the Sassy and Crafty shop at sassyandcrafty.com. I'm also going to be using for my project today the Bouncy Path stencil right here. Or actually, this one is a phone cord stencil. And it has these amazing little details, super cute little phone cords. And then this one here is the Bouncy Path stencil. And these are all from the new release as well. And we'll be using those today on our project. So to get started, we are going to color first. And today I went ahead and I pre-stamped and pre-cut this out. Now the stamp has this extra little details here. We are gonna be stamping those on our finished blended background. So all I did is I cut around the main details because these little whiskers and the little swirly paths are all gonna be stamped on our bottom base letter. And we are going to be popping this up on pop dots to give it a little bit of dimension. Okay, so we're gonna get started coloring up this cutie kitty. I'm going to start with my shadow tones, so C7. And I'm just gonna go through anywhere there would be a shadow area on this little kitty. We're gonna color it up as a white kitty with pink ears, um, pink in the inset of the ears, and then some cute little rosy cheeks. So again, anywhere where this little chin would layer and along the side of the face and then here on the cute little arms holding the letter we're going to pull that shadow detail and again this is all with C7 and then you can't forget the little neck there Pulling the shadow underneath the chin now. And then where the little letter overlaps. And across the shoulders. And then here too where this letter will cast a shadow on this little kitty. Along either side. And then, of course, this cutie little tail here, we're going to add the shadow along this bottom edge, this inside corner, and then again, pulling that shadow along this bottom edge. We're imagining that our light source is coming from the top up here, the upper left, so that's why we're casting all of these shadows down here on that bottom edge. And then of course where this little hand would overlap, you'd have a little shadow. And then on the ears, on the inside part, we're just gonna curve that around on either side. And then just a little bit on those inside, inner part of the ear. And now we can add a little bit of texture to our kitty cat, so it kind of looks like fur. So at this point, I'm going to just add a few little fur lines I'm kind of coloring on the side of my marker, adding these tiny little details, just kind of flicking that texture in towards the, this little kitty cat. And now same thing on these little arms, the little paws, just flicking that texture pattern in towards the center, just breaking up that line and creating a little bit of texture. And then same thing on the arms, 
We're going to add a little bit to the tail and you're just going to follow the curve of this tail to add our little texture and you're only adding it where your little shadow areas really are. So where we drew in those previous shadow lines, you can turn your page if that helps get these little texture lines at more of an angle. And then here too. Okay, and then here on the side of our little kitty's face, we are gonna pull a few little texture lines there. And then here too, along the side of the face, same thing on the opposite side. And we're keeping these ones that are closer to the chin a little bit smaller, but still pulling that texture through. And there we go. We're just kind of overlapping those last two little furs there. And then on the ears, on either side where we pulled that shadow line, we're just going to add a couple. And then we're going to smooth out this line here under the chin. This is still C7. Okay, so now we have our little details done our main base shading for the kitty. Now we're going to move on to C5 and we're going to go over those same lines and just kind of flick towards the center and extend them a little bit further. So all I'm doing is just like that. So starting where my previous shadow is and building up this color, it's still going to read as a white kitty that's why we're not flicking too far into the center, but we do want to add this contrast. And this is going to blend out our previous shadow color and add a little bit more dimension. And again, I'm mostly coloring on the side of my marker. And blending out the shadows. And then to give yourself a better angle to blend, I like turning my paper so that I'm kind of flicking away from myself. That gives a better angle for me to be able to control these little texture lines, so do whatever is most comfortable for you. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start adding shadow to, or extending the shadow to this little face here. We're going to pull the shadow line underneath the chin. We don't want to add too much texture there, but we do want to follow through on our texture on the side of this little kitty's head. So there we go, and then same thing on this opposite side. And you notice that goes over a few of these lines a couple of times. If I don't get the, the angle of this little texture curve quite right, you can start in the shadow area again and then reflick that line. So just like that, I'm going to follow through on the top of this little kitty's head there, pulling that shadow through, and then again on either side of these little ears. There we go. And then you have a little bit of shadow here underneath this letter. So we're just going to pull that across and then make sure we extend that shadow underneath the neckline, just like that. 
Okay, so now we can move on to C3. We're going to do the same thing we just did, going over these previous lines, just blending it out a little bit more, especially focusing on the bottom portion of like arms or the shadow side of the head. So this side will have a little bit more shadow on this right edge, my right edge, the cat's left side. Pulling this color across the top edge, blending it out, and then of course underneath our little letter here, and then the tail. Okay, and then last but not least we're going to pull in our C1. And this is where we're going to blend out even further towards the center. We're going to feather our edges. So all I'm doing is if I have this little edge here, I'm just going to go right up to the edge and then feather that out. So it will blend those areas. But still leaving a majority of this paper white. So just like that, feathering this through, same thing on the tail, on the neck, and then here on the little face, we're going to feather all the way around towards the center, building up the color, going over a couple of times if you feel it needs more contrast. And just pulling these same lines, the same texture towards the center, going from the opposite direction. Again, this is C1. And then, of course, not forgetting the little ears. Okay, and now what we can do is we can go back through with our C7 one more time and we can just re-pull our darkest little edges of this fur texture just to reinforce that since we blended out a lot of that color. So just pulling those little fur textures in our darkest shadows. Just like that. And then same here on the side of our little kitty. And a little bit underneath the envelope, but not connecting it. Just adding a little bit to either side. And then a few little lines here on the top of this little kitty's head. And then here too on the ears. And there we go. So you can see we added all those grays, but our little kitty still looks like a little white kitty cat. You could also do this in any color tone. I've done it in pinks or blues. You would just follow the same process. You would start from your darker, more saturated color and then go towards your like 00 or 000 color. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our blush and our little pink tones to the ears. So I'm gonna start off with RV04. And here I am just going to add a few little lines like this, like little flick lines like that, just kind of adding that same fur texture to the inner part of the ear. Just like that. And then here on the nose, I'm just going to trace underneath 
this bottom edge and pull up along that right side. And then on the heart here, I'm going to follow through with that same color. I'm going to leave a small little gap around the outer edge of the white of the paper. Same thing on this portion there. And then I'm just going to add a few little texture dots right over my shadow line so that our little heart kind of looks shimmery. I'm just randomly dotting, changing the mark, making and making. Some of these are larger, some are smaller, and just vary the placement. There we go. Okay. And then also, let's see, I think I'm going to color, I'll do the letter blue. So we'll leave, we'll just do this part pink. I'm going to move on to RV21. And the same thing here, I'm going to go through, I'm going to just now I'm going to dot right over the previous dots, go further towards the center of my little heart here. And same thing with this outer edge. And just following the shape of that little heart and layering more where your shadow area would be to give more contrast and more layers of color. There we go. And then here on the ears, I'm just going to flick this color towards the center. And then on the nose, I'm just gonna barely trace over that line, extending that shading slightly further. And then here on the sides of the cheeks, this is where we're gonna start adding some blush. So I'm just gonna start where my shadow area is. I'm gonna flick this color towards the center, just like that. I'm going to do the same thing on this opposite side, starting where your shadow is. And then just kind of flicking that color towards the center, just like that. And now I'm going to move on to RV10. And again, I'm going to do the same thing, just small little dots, still leaving some white of the paper. At this point, I'm going to go along this side edge on the right and then that opposite side there, but still leaving this left edge, my left side, the heart's right side, as just the, the white we had left, the highlight. And then here, I'm go just going over, blending out some more of the inner ear part, adding a dot to the nose. And then to finish off, we're going to take RV000, and this is where I'm going to blend out the edge of this blush here towards the center of our kitty's face. I'm just barely tapping the edge of this blush, and it's going to soften that edge. I'm going to go over the rest of the nose, just kind of tap it, and then same thing on the inner part of the ears. I'm just kind of dotting it like I did with the heart. And then I'm going to dot the heart and just kind of blend out any areas that I feel need. There we go. And then the last thing I like to do on my pinks is I like to take a red. I'm going to use RV29. And I like to just add a couple of little contrast shadow dots. This is going to really make this pop like a hot pink. Same thing on the inner ear, just a couple little lines. Um, the underneath part of the nose, I'm just barely leaving a little dot. And then that will be it for the blush and then the nose there. You could also take, if you feel you want a little bit more color built up, I'm taking RV21 one more time. And I'm just dotting that inside edge there, but still leaving the highlight at the top part of the nose. Okay, so now I'm going to take B12, and I'm going to add some shading to our little envelope here. I'm just going to go along this right and left edge and where this little envelope um, layers over the other part of the envelope. And I'm just going to pull that edge shadow just like we did before. And 
then where the hands overlap this envelope. We're just going to keep this very light blue so it still kind of reads as um, a different white tone to go with our little kitty cat. So that was with B12. I'm now going to move on to just one other color to blend this out, which is going to be my BG000. This will give it a cool tone. And I'm just blending this towards the highlight of the paper. And again, coloring on the side of my marker and especially focusing on these outer corners of the envelope where you're going to have your greatest shadow. And then where the arm overlaps on either side. Just like that. And then I'm going to just take that same B12 one last time. And one thing I love to do in my coloring is add a couple of little texture dots. Just like that. For some added little texture there. And then I'm going to take my gel pen and add my final details. So this is just a little gel pen, a jelly roll pen. I'm just going to add a little line in the dot a couple of little dots to the inside of the ears, a little highlight to our heart here, again a little line and a dot, a line and a dot, and then a couple of little random dots onto my coloring just for some added texture and highlight. Also, if you went out of the lines on any kind of areas, you can fix that with your gel pen. And don't overdo it. Just a few little dots goes a long way and looks great. Okay, so now we are done with the coloring. We're ready to add this 2D to our card. So what I did is I took a card base, just a regular A2 size card, and I cut one eighth of an inch smaller purple mat. Let me zoom this out just a little bit. You guys can see this better. Okay, I'm just going to use a little bit of Wilted Violet Distress Ink. I'm going to go around the edges of this mat. And now I'm just going to take some liquid adhesive and I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to my card base. There we go. I'm going to line this up into the center of my card base and then I'm going to use a little brayer tool to really push this down to make sure that it lays nice and flat and that the glue is distributed evenly underneath. Okay, so that's that first layer there. The next layer I'm going to do is a chipboard mat. So here I went ahead and I just took a die, a rectangle die, and this is just medium weight chipboard. And I'm going to get take that first stencil, this larger one here, the bouncy path stencil, and I'm just going to add a little bit of design to this. And I'm just going to layer this right over my stencil here. And I'm going to take Distress Ink in Vintage Photo and a little blending brush, right here a little makeup brush. I'm just going to load up my ink and then I'm going to go right over in circular motions on that little texture there, right over the chipboard. And this is going to give some really fun extra little texture to our background without having to have a bunch of pattern papers. You're really creating your own. And again, with the stencils, it's unlimited. You can make as many as you want to complete your cards. So I'm just going to twist this and then get this bottom edge here. 
We're just adding texture so we don't really have to tape this down. You can if you want. Um, sometimes I even shift the stencil and I'll just reposition it on the opposite side so it doesn't actually go together and it adds a little bit more interest that way too. It gives more of a mixed media look. So again, just getting in all those little grooves. I'm mostly focusing on the side edges so it's a little bit more concentrated. So there we go. Once we've removed the stencil, we have that really cool pattern. Okay, and then I'm just going to take that same vintage photo and I'm just going to quickly ink the edges. of my card base. Just like that. And then I'm going to take my card base that I created before with our purple mat and I'm just going to take some foam tape and then put this in the center of that card base. You could also just glue this right down if you wanted to. I just love the extra dimension, so I'm just adding a couple of pieces of foam tape. Okay. I'm just removing this foam tape and then putting this right into the center of our card base. And then just figuring out which way you want this to be. There we go. And then pressing that down. Okay, so then our next layer, we're going to ink blend our little background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide. And just a little blending sponge. I'm going to ink blend this top portion with the peacock feathers first. In just small circular motions, just adding a small little blend there. It doesn't have to be super concentrated. You just want to give a variation of color. We're going to make it almost like semi-rainbow and cool tones down to pink. So we're going to do peacock feathers first, and then we're going to move on to salty ocean. So now I'm just moving right onto Salty Ocean Distress Oxide and starting off my mat right onto my mat so I don't get any harsh lines and blending right through that previous color. So still leaving that peacock feathers up there at the top and now Salty Ocean here and then combining that through. And now I'm going to move on to my purple tone, which is my wilted violet, and this is just Distress Ink. I love combining both of these, and I'm switching blending, blending sponges each time. So again, just blending right over that. And smoothing that out. If you have kind of a harsh line there, you can take your previous color, which was that blue, that salty ocean and just re-blend right over that color to smooth it out. And then last but not least, I'm going to be pulling my Distress Ink and Picked Raspberry. And this is where I'm going to finish blending out this bottom edge with the pink and getting that base tone down. There we go, just like that. Adding a little bit more color to that bottom edge to really make it pop. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that other stencil, which is the foam cord stencil, and we're just gonna add some texture to this. So we're gonna line it right up, right on top of our background there. And at this point I'm going to tape this down so it doesn't shift on me. I'm just adding a couple pieces of tape there to hold it down. And then I'm going to take those same colors with some blending brushes now. So I'm starting with the peacock feathers. I, this time I'm using a makeup brush 
and I'm just going to pull right across that stencil with the exact same color building it up so now we're going to have this texture show through. Whoops. And if it shifts, like I said, it's okay. We could have taped that down underneath. Not a big deal. We can have that. There we go. Just like that. So now I'm going to pull that color from this opposite edge. And I'm just going to go right through my color. So this is our peacock feathers. And now I'm going to move on to salty ocean. And I'm just following that same rainbow order that we used before. I mean, not exactly rainbow, but the rainbow colors that we did. So salty ocean now, and we're going to go right over the salty ocean portion, starting from the edges, leaving it highlight in the center. Oops, and we'll just place that there. It really doesn't matter. We just want to add a little bit of texture. So now we're going to move on to our wilted violet and just get a different little blending brush. And we're just going to pull that color through on either side of this little phone cord just to add a little bit of detail to this background. And then last but not least, we're going to use our pink here, our picked raspberries. And again, just grabbing a little blending brush and pulling that color from either side. And then same thing on this opposite edge. Let me remove this tape here. and just blending right across that. And then once we remove it, we have this really fun little pattern peeking through. And then to activate the ink, I'm going to take just an old toothbrush and I'm going to spritz this. I'm gonna do that off camera so it doesn't, doesn't get all over my work area. So I splatter a couple of times, then I'm just going to take a little tissue, wait a second, and then just dab up all those little water droplets. So now we have this really fun background and it has that little texture peeking through of that stencil. And then what I did is I took this, this right here and I went ahead and I stamped our little stamp image on it. So this is the same thing, I just stamped an image on it in the center. And now what we're going to do is we are going to take our little kitty that we colored. I'm just removing her right off of my washi tape there. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to pop dot her up into the center of our card to give her a little bit of a layered look. So we're just going to line her right up to that edge to give her a little bit more 3D, three dimension, just like that. And then we have her little heart, and we're going to just stick another little foam tape right where the heart is. And that little heart we colored up, we're just going to add that right to the front, just paper piecing that right on. So now we have our super cute little background there. I cut one more little square, and I'm just going to glue this right on. And it's the same size, I'm just adding a small little frame by gluing it to the side there. So I'm going to add some adhesive to the back of this. Line this up to this edge, just leaving about an eighth of an inch peeking through. And pressing that down. And now I can take our foam tape and I can add this to the center of our card. I'm going to pop this whole thing up here. Let me quick clean up this ink so we don't transfer it to the back of our card. Okay, so here's our card here. We're going to take just a couple more pieces of foam tape and add it to this little back panel. Just like that. And then 
layer this into the center of our card. Our cute little kitty. And then I just have a couple of little die cut hearts I cut. I'm going to just take some of that ink, that purple, and just go around the edges to give it a little bit of color. I'm going to do that with this opposite one too. And I'm just going to nest these right in. Let's see, that one will probably go on top. So I'm just adding a little bit of liquid adhesive here. I'm going to have this one peeking out the side there. And then this opposite one I'm going to use foam tape for. And this one I'm going to do two layers of foam tape just so it sticks up a little bit higher than this base that we popped up. So I'm just going to add a couple pieces here to the bottom of the card. And then layer this slightly angled. And now for our sentiment, I stamped out the handwritten letters, our love in an envelope. I'm just going to go ahead and adhere this to the center of my little chipboard piece. I'm going to ink the edges with that same purple color that I did before. And that was a wilted violet distress ink. I'm going to glue this into the center of my little frame there. And then I'm going to take my vintage photo and go around the chipboard edge. And now I can go ahead and just add some liquid adhesive and line this right up to the edge of my card here up at the top. And since our kitty is lifted up a little bit, this layers right below her. And there we go. Our card is all done. You could also add a couple of little sequins if you wanted to. Like just glue those little ones on there for some extra sparkle and shine. And there we go. That is our little card. Handwritten letters, our love in an envelope, and our sweet little kitty. Again, I used from Sassy and Crafty the Bouncy Path Stencil. Let me grab it. I have all the ink still on here, but the Bouncy Path Stencil and the Foam Cord Stencil. And then the stamp set I used is the Love and Envelope stamp set. And again, all available in the Sassy and Crafty shop at sassyandcrafty.com. Thank you, everyone. I'm so happy you're all able to join me today. I can't wait to see what you create with these stamps. All right, see you guys soon. Bye.